Welcome to In The Workshop and the title of this episode is A Very Useful Present From A Kind Viewer. That's because it is a very useful present from a kind viewer. The kind viewer is called Norman and he sends me things now and again. This is going to be very, very useful. It was also Norman who sent me two bottles of marking out fluid, a blue one and a red one. I use the blue one most of the time now. I'm not too excited about the red coloured marking out fluid because I get it on my hands and people say, Oh dear, have you cut yourself? And then I have to say, No, it's marking out fluid. Then I have to waste time explaining what marking out fluid is. So I think I'll stick to using the blue stuff. Anyway, back to the plot. Under the bench at one side, I always have a tub like this with lots of hammers in. Different hammers, hard hammers, soft hammers, ball pane hammers, claw hammers, any kind of hammer that I may own. This very useful tool rack that Norman sent me will also hold hammers, but the bulk of my hammers will remain in the usual place. I normally use a plastic tub on the bench with various things like pliers in it and small screwdrivers, but now the tool rack will be able to hold most of them. Where am I going to put this tool rack in the workshop? I think I've found the perfect place. To the right of the vise, I have an old bookcase, and I'm going to screw the tool rack onto the top edge of the bookcase. In this clip, I'm holding it in the position where I want it to be and using a felt tip pen to make a mark on the edge of the bookcase where I'm going to drill some pilot holes and screw the entire assembly to the top edge of the bookcase. This is a perfect position for this tool rack. It's right by the vise and it's also quite near to the central bench where I do most of the work. I'm drilling pilot holes using my small Proxon motor tool so the wood doesn't split. As the bookcase is made from chipboard covered in melamine, it's not very strong, and it's definitely better to pilot the holes first because the screws would split the wood. Initially, I only marked the position and drilled pilot holes for three screws, and once I'd fastened the plastic tool rack to the edge of the bookcase, it was time to pilot a couple more holes and put two more screws in. And here, I'm screwing the last two screws in place. Now for the fun part. Here you see the arrangement, it's right next to the vise, I need to populate it with the tools that I use frequently, starting with my set of Barco screwdrivers and Barco socket drivers. The word Barco is spelt B-A-H-C-O. One viewer said it's not Barco, spelt B-A-R-C-O. And yes, I am aware of that. I think the pronunciation should be something like Barco. A man from Sweden told me that anyway. It took a while before I got everything into the right position. And then I gave it a rest for a while. I went to Blackgate's Engineering on Thursday and bought two pieces of metal, which are, as usual, wrapped up in newspaper. Here I'm cleaning all the oil and filth off the metal before I put it into my stockpile. This is one eighth by three quarters of an inch steel angle. I don't need quite as much as this, but I thought I would buy some and just have it in stock. I'm going to use some of this to make a pair of cylinder mounting brackets for a Stuart Victoria as part of my How to Build a Model Steam Engine series, which is for my Patreon supporters only. I wasn't happy with the first mounting bracket, so out of this metal, with a lot left over, I'm going to make a couple more. What's this then, I hear you ask? This is a thing called a Deco Mesh Router Extender. I need the internet in the shed for my Wi-Fi call on the mobile phone. The workshop's quite a long way from the house, and when I'm in there, there's no service on the phone. I live in a very bad reception area and I need the phone on in the workshop in case I injure myself. This week I've been really busy laying this cable underground all the way down to the house and then in the house in one of the upper rooms is my recording studio and this is where I work. This month has been spectacularly difficult. I relocated from West Yorkshire to East Yorkshire and I moved into the house with no heating, no water and no sanitation. Thankfully, that was only for the first week, but there was such a lot to do, and there's still a lot left to do. But I'm getting there now, and I'm even managing to make videos in between doing all this. It's definitely getting harder. I'm now nearly 67 years old. In this clip, I'm in the outer part of the workshop, and this should really be included in the series How to Rebuild a Stuart Model Beam Engine. I think I'll also be using some footage like this in the next episode too. The base of this Stuart model beam engine was very badly damaged and at some time in its life it's been brazed back together. And someone made a good job of the brazing but they didn't really clean it up afterwards so that's what I'm doing now. 
I'm smoothing out all the bumps left by the brazing process, starting with my 4-inch belt sander and then moving over to the 1-inch belt sander to get into the corners. I've been really careful not to take too much metal away because I don't want to weaken the base, which at the moment is very strong. It wasn't really possible to do everything using a belt sander, so instead I moved over to the manual method and used a file, which worked out much better. By using a file I'm able to remove much more metal at every pass, and you can clearly see where the brazing is. I received an email from a chap from Germany the other day, a Mr Schultz, and in the email he enclosed this photograph. And he went on to say in the email that his father, Mr Will Schultz, who was in his 80s, built this beam engine completely from scratch, and the only casting was the flywheel that he found in his scrap box. This is a very beautiful engine built by a true craftsman. And it's all bar stock, don't forget no castings, it's bar stock and fabrication. I was so very impressed by this model built by Will Schultz, I thought I'd show some pictures of it on here. And now it's back to my world, repairing someone's mistake. Well, I've not been too scathing about this because the repair is good, but I'm still filing it flat and rounding the edge very carefully, and when it's all finished and painted, it should look OK. I was a bit concerned that the old paint was going to react with the new paint, and yes, I'm aware of barcodes and this, that and the other that stop the interaction of different paints, but I don't have any of that. And not unsurprisingly, in a very short time, the paint looked a thorough mess. So there's only one solution to this, wipe off the paint and take everything back to bare metal. Quite a few viewers have said, well why don't you get yourself a shot blasting machine? Well I've got a problem with that. I'm surrounded by neighbours and I don't think my neighbour would be too pleased if I cracked up my compressor when I was doing a shot blasting job, not to mention all the dust etc etc. Simon Hudson at the Steam Workshop has a shot blasting cabinet, and I'm sure if I went over there, he'd let me use that. Even though I'm very old and decrepit, I still play in a band with some of my friends, so every Thursday I go from East Yorkshire back to West Yorkshire for the rehearsal. And as the Steam Workshop is quite close to where we rehearse, I could just pop in and use the Steam Workshop shot blasting cabinet to remove all the paint. But for the moment, and for the video, I'm using my standard thinner or cellulose thinners, also known as lacquer thinner, to dissolve the existing paint. I'm still in the outer part of the workshop, right next to a wide open door. Whenever you use this stuff, you must be in a very, very well ventilated place. In the village where I live, there's actually a powder coating place and he has shot blasting equipment. And as we're not having a band rehearsal this week in West Yorkshire, the solution is to visit the man at the powder coating place and get him to remove the paint, I think. I need to make his acquaintance anyway. That's it for now, though. I've finished the workshop. The house is looking, well, reasonable, but I still haven't finished the studio, so I'm going to go back in there and continue wiring it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.